If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 8, and we're going to begin reading in verse 22. Uh, as you're turning there, uh, I did speak with Donna, and she's feeling a little bit better, and she, she, she was going to try to eat, so we'll see how that goes. Gospel of Mark chapter 8, uh, beginning in verse 22. The Bible says, And he cometh to Bethesda, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And after he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, he was restored and saw every man clearly. Let's go to Lord and Lord's Prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you for what it does for us each day, for the encouragement that you give us and for the strength that you bring to us through it. We pray now that you would uh, bless your word to the hearts of those that are listening. Uh, open up the hearts of the lost and save them according to your mercy and grace, we pray it. Amen. Uh, I'll be preaching this morning... Lord, be my helper on the thought, what is your focus? And I also thought about, as I was preaching, of a uh, possibility, has your focus changed? Uh, focus is how well your eyes work, and it also is what you concentrate on doing. Now, all of you that have glasses, if you remove them like this, I don't know... Uh, how well you see, but I see to about right here in good in good shape, and if you get beyond that, I can't, and to read, I have to do like this. Uh, that is everything pretty much out of focus. Uh, I don't see it clearly. The thing that I need to uh, direct my attention is hard to get a hold of. Now, I would dare say the majority of people today, not even this long after the Lord saves them, things get out of focus. Mm -hmm. uh, you no longer see what you need to see clearly. Mm -hmm. If you ever wonder why people waste so much time gathering money here, it's because that things are out of focus. They, they don't look to eternal things. And we live in a day and age which I dare say even the redeemed that are around us, things are not in focus as they ought to be. And so, well, Larry, I'm not sure about myself. Well, think about your chief motivator, and that really is your focus. That, that is what is your eye of concentration, is whatever leads you the most. And those of us who are believers, it's difficult it is. In 2024, Christ needs to be our focus. Now, going back to our text, the Bible says, And he cometh to Bethesda. Now, what had just happened is that uh, he had fed the 5,000, and the, the apostles did not get it. If you remember, uh, one of his questions, Have you brought any bread? And he kind of got upset with them eventually because they never got the idea that the bread wasn't the sliced up bread, but the bread was the word of God. And uh, he wanted them refocused on that. And you know, I have no doubt the apostles was focused on that at one time. And they got off very quickly. Remember what uh, uh, Peter said uh, when he was saved in Matthew 18? Thou art the Christ, thou, hast the, uh, thou art the word of God. And it wasn't no time that he lost his focus. I don't know that he even really believed that Christ was able to feed 5,000. In fact, it wasn't him, I believe it was another of the apostles when uh, he said, what have you? And he says, we have five loaves and two fishes. But what are these among so many? 
they were focusing on numbers again. Mm -hmm. What is your focus? You know, what I have found going from church to church and state to state preaching is this. Many of them have lost their focus. They're not focused on the presence of God. They're focused on the presence of people. When God built the house in Isaiah, how many people were there? One. Isaiah, right? That was it. And then the Lord took up the rest of the place. So we find out that one of the focuses that we maybe need to leave behind is worrying about who's here and who's not. That is not the focus. And he kind of, so after this big situation, if you will, uh, where, the, where the apostles had to be redirected and say, hey, this is not your focus. I am your focus. After he gets by that, he begins, and they go over to Bethesda, and he cometh unto Bethesda, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. In other words, they besought Christ to touch the blind victim. Now, we all uh, were blind at one time, right? There was a time in our lives, those of us that are redeemed, that could not see Christ for who he really is. Now, we may know about Christ. We may know that Jesus lived, and we may know that, that he uh, was a just man, and on and on we could go, but they didn't know Christ. They weren't connected to Christ. He had not saved their soul. That's the blind man. Now, this blind man, some individuals, probably individuals really questioning the authority of Christ, brought him to him and wanted him healed, wanted him to be able to see. Now, it is integral that God's people see spiritually. When tragedy happens, what do you see? I notice in uh, uh, I've, watched, uh, I've read too many mysteries and watched too many mystery videos. I, I really, uh, I write myself off now because y'all have seen where that little handicapped boy uh, went missing in Nashville and then a college kid has gone missing and now uh, a middle-aged man, a man more my age is going missing. I thought, well, let's have a serial killer. And that's where I jumped to. But is that the right vision? Three separate circumstances probably have nothing to do with each other. What's the correct way to look at it? What are you looking at today? What is your vision? What, what is your focus? And as we go about the day, our focus should always be Christ, should always be the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the focus of the Christian. So they wanted this miracle to be done, and it is a miracle when the blind see. Verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. In other words, he didn't want this big expo exposition to go on. He didn't want uh, uh, it all to be about him. He didn't want. Uh, he didn't want him to. Uh, he didn't want himself to look like the hero. So he took the blind man away from town. And notice what he does. He spits on him. Spits on his. Spits on his hand and rubs it in his eyes. Now this is not the only event that went this way. Remember. There was another time that he took his spittle and created like a, a mud with it, with some right, dirt. Right. Uh, here he uses pure spit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we think that that's a kind of a, a weird way, and not necessarily, if you if he's blind, you'd be open to the you'd be open to the idea, right? Mm -hmm. We think, ooh, but if he's blind. The story would be different, right? Well, I'll give, I'll give it a whirl, right? And so we find the Lord works in different ways. Now, that focus for you may be different focus for me. I want, and it's not always that way, I want my focus to be my preaching ministry. That's, that's what the Lord has given me to do to the day I die. So you know what? I want it to be my focus. But sometimes what I find is nursing becomes my focus. Sometimes what I find is my children 
become, to become my focus. And what I need to get back is what my focus really should be. Do I have to care for my children? You betcha. Do my children need to know that I care for them deeply? Yes, they do. But it is not my focus. Now, what the devil wants to do is to steal your focus. Yeah. Now, it'll make you, it'll make you uh, do something else. It will take your time from Christ and put it on something else that you may consider. Uh, and in your mind, you would never say, oh, that's equally as important. You would never admit that. But it is the result of what we do, is it not? And, and so we find that this, this man uh, is taken out of town. Uh, the Lord uses an unusual thing to do it. And notice the result. I see men as trees walking. Mm -hmm. Was it in focus? No. Now, the Lord could have done it. Don't, don't, don't ever doubt he did the repetition to, because he didn't do it right the first time. He, he did it to teach them something. Okay. But things get back out of focus. If he wanted to say, see, he would clear it up immediately. He, he didn't even have to do the spittle thing. Mm. But he was making an, an illustration out of it. Mm. He, he was showing them uh, patience. He was showing the healed, and that's me and you, can get out of focus. We take our glasses off. Now, because I know where every one of you sit, I could say, well, there's Bella and Sarah and AJ and Gracie, but does that mean I can see them? No. To see them, I have to do this again. And to see the will of God, you have to have things in focus. What is the focus of your life? I think each and every one of us have one, and I think it's, it's integral that we identify. That, that whatever is getting our attention and whatever we can see clearly is our focus. And you know the rest of the story. He touched him again, and everything was cleared up, and he went along his way. Things were back in focus. He could see again. He went from blind to clarity. Now, we, know, we don't know anything else that happened to this man. His physical vision probably stayed good the rest of his life. We don't know. Well, I'm assuming that it did. But do you think this man that his focus was always the one that did that for him. And I would say probably not. See, they didn't have the welfare program in this day. So you know what a regular healthy man had to do? He had to work. Right? So I'm assuming this old boy had to do 40 hours after this. Now remember, man, and we, we grumble about 40 hours. Back, there, back then, you worked sun to sun. That's 12 hours. Most of the year, anyway. Now, I think he probably thought of Christ. And I don't know what he did for a living. If he's a farmer or uh, uh, what exactly. But I think at times he probably got so busy that he forgot about Christ. His focus had changed. Now, I've never worked in a factory, but Mom told me back in the 50s when she worked in Nashville, and they made flower sacks. And back then, flower sacks, you could make dresses out of flower sacks, which to me was an interesting concept, but she said you get really tired about mid-afternoon, and they had a press that came down and sewed that seam all at one time. You'd bring it down like this. And then you'd fill your fabric like this. And you can see what the problem would be. And she felt her fingernail snap. Yeah. And she said, Larry, I never wore fa long fingernails, but I was glad I had one that day. <laughs> and I'm sure she was. You know what was wrong with Mama? She lost her focus. Just that repetition moment. And I, again, I remember uh, working in the factory, but I bet that gets boring. You know, just 
And then you get doing it and you don't even think about it. Mom said that sometimes her, her uh, team leader would stand at her shoulder and say, June, how do you do that? Because she, they told Mama, you look like you're part of the machine. What well, was because it was habitual? Same thing when people take out a cigarette and fire one up and not even really realize that they're smoking one. It's habit. It's habitual. And their focus has changed. Was Mama focusing on that work? If she almost cut her finger off, she wasn't focusing. Right? So what are you focusing on? What, what, what is the primary thing when we come to church? Huh, it's like the church at Ephesus in, in Revelation 2. They, they, they were still doing a lot of things. They still were very evangelistic. And it said it cannot, they could not tolerate one that did evil. And yet and still, he says, you've left your first love. They were no longer focused. Well, I guess they were focused. Have you ever thought about focusing on the ministry and not focusing on Christ? That's what they were doing. Yes. And, and so we see then as the Lord's people that we need to be uh, very aware of what's going on. Go with me to the Gospel of John chapter 21. And, and we'll read it about a very marked individual that this very event happened to him. Uh, John chapter 21, in the first verse, we read about Peter. Now, remember concerning Peter, he had had some good days, and he had had some really, really bad days. We just uh, referred to the Gospel of Matthew, where he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then in the very same book, he curses with an oath. I don't know the man. You think he had lost his focus? I believe he had. I believe not. He was no. He, he, you know what, Peter? And, and don't get down on Peter because we probably did the same thing if it wasn't for the goodness of God. You, you know what had happened Peter, to Peter? He was focused on preservation. I want to live through this. I want to come out alive. And don't get down on Peter because that's pretty much a, uh, that, that's pretty much a direct will we all possess very naturally. I'm going to preserve self. And that's exactly what he did. He denied Christ. He took, he, uh, took his focus off on, of Christ and put it to himself. And now we have another event. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 21, after these things, uh, the first verse, Jesus shewed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise shewed he himself. There were together uh, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. And they say unto them, him, we also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Now, what was Peter's occupation before he became an apostle? He was a fisherman, right? And he was a good fisherman. He got his focus back on something else, didn't he? All of us like to feel kudos in our work, don't we? Sister Hannah, you go back to work tomorrow and those little kids come up and hug you and tell you how much they've missed you. That's going to be good, ain't it? In, in, in my work, uh, one day last week, there was a lady that patted my hand and said, Larry, you talk to me like a real person. And, that, and I appreciate it. It was heartbreaking. You, you know, what that told me too, though, that was heartbreaking. People talk over her most of the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not engaging Junior. I am engaging Justin. I'm talking over him. Mm -hmm. That's sad, ain't it? Mm -hmm. My focus is not on him. Mm -hmm. And many times, and, and, I, and it felt good. He was giving me a compliment on how 
I treated the residents. Well, you know, but as good as that sound, that should not be my focus. I appreciate the old man, and I'll, so, I'll say hello again to him tomorrow. But my career is not my focus. We've got to put our focus back on Christ. And, and you remember here, uh, your members here at New Testament, and that's very important, and you should focus some of your energy to New Testament, but focus upon Christ. And so he switched his focus back to this world. He switched his focus back to what this world had to offer, and I want you to see what he come up with. Nothing. He came up with nothing. You know, you know what? A focus on this world for 70 years is going to give you nothing. And we find that to be true. Now notice what happens in verse 4. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered and said, No. Now, when they answered that way, they don't know how much of a mouth of truth they said. They lack meat. I heard my mother-in-law and uh, sister uh, Dana talking about weird diets and that my mother-in-law talking about how eventually it'll be all fake meat. And I, and I look for that to be true because people in this age think more of a hog than they do people. And uh, uh, with that, the, the focus is changing. Uh, they were, the answer was no. They had nothing of sustenance. Do you? If the Lord Jesus Christ said to you, do you have any meat? Do you have something that's going to help you keep going? What's your answer? Now, the sad truth is this. No one can answer that but you. But I, I want a little meat in the sack, don't you? I want something that's going to sustain me when times get rough. Now, the, uh, uh, we, we desperately need that as Christians, and the only way that you're going to get that is to keep your focus on Christ. Then notice what he says. And he said to them, Cast the net on the other side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now, do you have any idea when this happened before? Because it did happen before. When they called, uh, <laughs> when Peter was called, he was supposed to cast the net on the other side again. And so it was a memory. It jogged his memory. And as soon as it was said, what did John say? It's the Lord. <laughs> See, John was refocused immediately. He knew, hey, hey, that's Christ. He's back with us. You know what? We must focus on Christ. And, and you know, it's a glorious, wonderful thing that, that he gave him a little jig, and he said, oh, that's Christ. I recognize his voice. But sometimes recognizing Christ isn't that easy. Sometimes he has to grab us by the neck and give us a good one, and we can say, oh, that's Christ. <laughs> right. right. And, and so we as Lord's people, we have to evaluate within ourselves what are we focusing on at the moment. You know what makes the difference between a good church service and a, and a mediocre ch church, church service or a flat church service is where your focus is, not me. It is where the focus of the individual is. And if you're focused on Christ, I will guarantee you, you'll leave this place and be able to say it's been good to be in the house of the Amen. Lord. Amen. It's all about focus. And we're so distracted in the modern day, it's not impossible to focus as we should. Now, uh, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Chapter 
Second Samuel chapter 11, beginning in the very first verse. We're going to read about David, a man that the Bible said that the Lord God said was a man after his own heart. I believe David was a saved individual in the Old Testament grace that existed. But even David loses his focus. The very king, there's been no more king like him except for Christ. He loses his focus. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. See, David was supposed to be out on the battlefield. He had lost his focus. You know, young men that say, I'm called to preach and maybe pastor one church and you never see them again, they've lost their focus. Some people say, well, they were never called to start with. I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, you well may be right, but I know at the very minimal, Christ is no longer their focus. Now, David's responsibility, and, it said, and the Lord decreed it this way, the sword shall never depart from your house. That was his job. You know, uh, old, old nurses even mumble and tell you what you're doing wrong when you care for them. You know why? Because it'll never depart from them. It will always be there. Very same way, David's position was not at his house. It was at a battlefield. It wasn't his responsibility to tell someone to go in his stead. Now, should Joab have been there? Sure. Joab was his right-hand man. But it was not Joab's responsibility. So, we find that because of this, David had forgotten his focus was the military defense of Israel. He lost his focus, and it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose up, uh, upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, again, we find that word look, it's the one that I can't do without this, right? Something else had entered his focus. A very beautiful woman. You know, the best thing we can do sometimes is put on our blinders and look straight ahead. Now, man, be honest with yourself, there's still some very pretty women out there, right? Keep your focus. Very simple. Keep your focus. My focus, in that sense, belongs on Donna and Donna alone. Right? Keep your focus. And we find in the era that David did that now he's looking at Bathsheba and, and he takes it a step further. His focus having switched to Bathsheba instead of the work of God, instead of the will of God, he begins to make inquiry about her. And why does he do that? Why is he asking, who is this woman? Because she is now his focus. You know what you're going to ask questions about and exp express interest in? Whatever your focus is. And that's exactly what he does. Is this not Bathsheba? The wife of Uriah, the Hittite? See, other people knew about him. And you know, that, that's the thing, you know. <laughs> he was king. He thought that, that, that he was just giving them citizen information. But David wanted more because he lost his focus. Yeah. Then we find he says, bring her to me. Find out who she is, what she's about, bring her to me. And you know, you think about Bathsheba in this, and listen, don't get the thing about her bathing outside 
as that she was enticing him. That was Jewish law, y'all. She was just fulfilling after, after her cycle. She was just doing what they were supposed to do. It was David's fault. And then she goes before the king. What are you going to say? I ain't going to do that. Well, you, have, you stand before a man who has the power to cut your head off. I mean, he was a military king. And all that we think of as king, he could snub life out just because he wanted to. So she concedes to what David does. And then we begin to see a host of paper. A few months later, I don't know how far along she was, whenever he had your eyes snubbed out and the baby's finally born, baby dies, remember? And then Nathaniel comes in and says, there was a man that had one little ewe sheep. Mm -hmm. And he begins to tell him a parable. And David, man, self-righteous, you tell me who this man is and I'm going to kill him. See, that's what I say. He could have killed, he could have, could have killed Bathsheba again. He was king. And Nathaniel said, Thou art the man. And immediately he repented. See, his focus had returned. He was back focusing on God. Have you ever thought about yourself? How sometimes the Lord has to fix your focus. Y'all ever used to go, I, I think he's retired now, Dr. Maria's office down here. I'm so old, I remember when he was beside West Side Market in one of those little storefronts when I first moved back from West Tennessee. And Adam always could do this well. This or this. This or this. This or this. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to focus. How your eyes do the absolute best. And, and it's the very same way Christ has to do sometime. Just return your focus. Mm -hmm. Now this is the problem. When you do it, it's called repentance. When he does it, it's called correction. And I would a whole lot rather repent and get my spiritual vision in line than to take a good beat from the Almighty God of heaven. Amen. Amen. Focus. You think about it every morning you wake up with something on your mind. Now, as uh, Brother Jared so keenly pointed out, I'm no singer, but often I wake up with a hymn on my heart. And there's nothing else I was thinking in my head. And you know what? I hope that never stops me because I think that shows your focus. <clears throat> what do you get up thinking about? Another day? Another dollar? What do you think about? As your day stretches out before you, you got to go, I got to do this, this, and this. I got to go to the nursing home. I got to do this many treatments. And I got this to do. I run up to the church building and do this. And all down in the day, it's very easy to lose focus. Now, one day, I can't even remember why I was coming over here to do something. It wasn't very big, but I had something to do here. And I didn't do it. I forgot about it. Because something else took my focus. Now, was it bad? I don't think so. I sent a woman to the hospital and probably saved her life in doing that. Yeah. But I still lost my focus, right? We think, of, we think of losing focus as doing evil things. It doesn't necessarily have to be, right? Just thinking about something that, that, that has no relation to Christ. That has no contact with him. That, that, that has nothing to do with his church and nothing to do with the gospel. And that is losing focus. And you know what? It'll make you very, very miserable. 
You ever feel spiritually miserable? And that's going to spill over into other aspects of your life. You're just going to feel like grunge all the time. A lot of times it's because you've lost your focus. You ever, you know how the best way to regain focus? Remember this, that Christ did something for you that not any body could do, that any being could do. Yes. Being is, I mean, that's the only place you can place God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is a being because he's certainly not like us. So it's what no one else could do. It's not that. It's what no other entity could possibly do is to save your never-dying soul and keep you from a lake of fire. Regain your focus.